Hello and welcome to another episode of the Modern Maker Workroom. In today's lesson, we're going to be working with the hem of this jacket. So I begin by cutting an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half wide uh, cross grain strip of linen. Now this is a 60 inch wide strip and it should fit well around the hem. We're going to position this strip about an inch to an inch and a quarter up from the bottom of the hem and roughly about an inch in from center front. Now in terms of historical measurements, that's about a dedo and a half up from the bottom and one dedo in from center front. We will keep that positioning and we'll baste the strip in. And what we'll do is you see that I have the bottom hem facing away from me and I'm applying this hem strip uh, trying to smooth the outermost edge of it, the one that's closest to the actual cut edge. And that means that the inner edge uh, has a little bit of a rippling effect. So once this is basted in place, we'll take our iron and we'll try to collapse that linen down as much as possible. Now, we could cut this on the bias and eliminate this wrinkling at the top, but the thing is, the bias isn't going to have quite the same structure, and it won't give the same stiffness as it will when we cut it on the cross grain. So we've shrunk it in place, and now we are going to stitch it in position. And it's important to know that when I'm taking these stitches, I'm taking them just through the linen layers. I'm making very careful, I'm being very careful with my fingers on the back side to make sure that I'm not taking these stitches all the way through to the wool layer. We don't want to see them on the outside. And we're using a simple catch stitch to put these in place. And we're keeping it fairly wide. Now you'll notice as I work, I'm using my thumb to push just a little bit of fullness into each stitch. And this uh, helps accommodate the extra width that's at the top of this strip. And as we continue to work, because it's positioned between each of those stitches, it will collapse down over time and we'll be able to get it nice and well uh, squished in place. With all of our catch stitching complete, now we'll take the iron and we'll just run it over the entire strip to crush that extra fullness kind of in place and get it um, secured down. Once that's done, we will turn the hem up around the edge of this strip. and It should provide you a nice uh, firm edge against which to, to pull to, to get the hem to sit nicely and stay consistent. We'll do this around the entire width of the hem and then uh, we'll press the center fronts and then we'll start our stitching to secure all of this hem in place before putting the skirt lining on. In the following clips you will see the skirt lining already basted in at the waistline. Don't worry, I haven't skipped a step. I've just rearranged them because I felt like I did them out of order when I shot this footage. So um, just bear with me and we'll get to that step in the next video. So with the hem entirely pressed, now we're going to turn our attention towards center front. Now if you recall, our center front body has a small extension left off of it so that we can have an extra wide, um, uh, extra wide allowance that we press back at center front. And this gives us a space to put the bone that goes up center front. Um, that way we don't have to insert a separate casing. We can just make it as a part of this bend back at center front. So I'll press that in place. This is a really good steaming iron, so I'm burning my fingers while I do this. Please be careful. And then when we reach the skirt, then it reverts back to a 3 8 inch seam allowance being pressed back. Now that the center front's pressed, we'll do this on both sides, but now that this center front is pressed, we'll turn our attention toward making a nice mitered corner at the, the front bottom edge. Now, mitered corners, the way we tend to do them in modern sewing, aren't particularly common in historical clothing. Um, they just would uh, fold up the bottom, fold back the front, and kind of squash the excess out of the way. You don't really see mitered corners very much. 
but uh, it does make for a little bit easier hand sewing. So we press the front and press the bottom and then take the triangular point and fold it in. And then we'll bring the front and the bottom up together and it creates a diagonal fold that we can stitch closed and it gives us a nice crisp tidy corner. Use my little clapper to press it and cool it into position so that it stays put. And then we'll move on to stitching the hem in place. Now we'll be focusing on skirts. We'll deal with center front and the bone and all of that at a, a later point in the videos. I will again use a cat stitch to secure the hem in place. As I get to the corner, I will change to just using a whip stitch and then I'll whip stitch these edges and draw them closed together so that the outer point is nice and tight and clean. And you can see I'm just using a whip stitch going all the way out to the end. And then I will take a couple of stitches in one place and then just run the needle back through the layers to the inner edge where I need to continue doing my catch stitch. There we are. We have a nice tidy point. And now I've returned to the hem and we're just going to flash through this a little bit so we can get to the other side. But again, you'll have a little bit of fullness that you have to push in between each cat stitch uh, because you have a round hem that you're turning up and the inner circumference is smaller than the cut edge of the fabric. So we have to let it flute and let us edge a little bit and then we'll squash it down with lots of steam and heat and uh, it'll lie nice and flat later. Okay, that portion is complete. And now we're using our iron to just give it a really good solid press. And we'll do this all the way around and we'll make sure that it's a really tight crease along the edge. Um, you can take the clapper as well and, and give it a nice good squish. And that should make the, the folded edge look really good and tight. In our next video, we will move on to applying the skirt linings and finally getting them in place. I know you can see them here, but we technically haven't done it yet. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. This has been The Modern Maker, and I'm Matthew Nagy.